Good evening. The Secretary General will brief on the meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council, and then we'll take your question. Secretary General. Uh, good evening. We have just concluded a day of productive meetings uh, on support uh, for Ukraine. This morning I met uh, with President uh, Zelensky. Together we took part in the US-led uh, Ukraine Defense uh, Contact Group. More than 50 nations, including all NATO allies, focused on Ukraine's most urgent uh, needs. Russia is <clears throat> stepping up uh, its attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure and is preparing again to use winter as a weapon of war. So, it's, so it is even more important that we step up and sustain our support to Ukraine. I welcome the new announcements uh, in the past hours, uh, among which Belgium and Denmark have confirmed their plans to, to, to deliver F-16 jets to Ukraine. Canada will donate uh, tens of millions of dollars worth of winter clothing and equipment. Germany announced a 1 billion euro package with a focus on Patriot and RST air defense systems. The UK is uh, committing more than 100 million euros for more air defenses and mine clearance equipment. And the US will provide more than 200 million uh, dollars worth of air defense, artillery and rocket uh, ammunition. This afternoon, we welcomed uh, Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem uh, Umerov to a meeting of the NATO-Ukraine uh, Council. Establishing the Council was one of the three historic decisions we took at the Vilnius Summit to bring uh, Ukraine closer to NATO. We also brought uh, Ukraine to within one step of the alliance by removing the requirement uh, for a membership action plan. And we agreed a program to make Ukraine's armed forces fully interoperable with its future NATO allies. Today, in the NATO-Ukraine Council, we discussed Ukraine's priorities on its path to NATO membership, including uh, long-term interoperability and defense procurement. A modernized defense and security sector will not only help Ukraine to prevail, it will also ensure uh, the Ukrainians can sustain peace and uh, stability. Allies commended Ukraine's continued fight against corruption, even in the midst of Russia's brutal war. We also made clear that NATO will step up uh, support to help Ukraine weather another difficult winter. This includes providing more cold weather clothing, demining capabilities, fuel and medical equipment. This will help the brave Ukrainian forces to fight through the cold and continue to press forward. Tomorrow, NATO's defense ministers will meet to discuss strengthening our deterrence and defense, NATO missions and operations, the damage to critical undersea infrastructure in the Baltic Sea, and the situation in the Middle East. With that, I'm ready to take your questions. Thanks. We'll start with uh, Reuters here, please. Uh, Secretary General Andrew Gray from Reuters. Uh, we've heard assurances in recent days that neither the infighting in the US Congress nor the uh, war uh, or the conflict uh, between Israel and the Palestinians will affect uh, support for Ukraine. On what basis um, can you give those assurances, especially given in the case of Israel, they're asking for air defense and ammunition, which is also what Ukraine is asking for? So first of all, what we're seeing today uh, is that actions uh, speak louder than words, meaning that not only do we uh, tell clearly that NATO allies are ready to uh, uh, stand by Ukraine, but actually allies are delivering uh, more support to Ukraine, uh, more air defense, uh, F-16s, ammunition, more training, uh, and uh, packages of different types of support. So I think the meeting today, uh, the NATO ministerial meeting and also the meeting of the uh, NATO Defence Contact Group uh, demonstrates that NATO allies are there to provide support to Ukraine, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and not only in, in, in words but also in, in, uh, in deeds. And, that, and that's a strong message uh, to Russia and to anyone that uh, believes that uh, Russia can wait out uh, uh, NATO allies. We are there to support Ukraine. And I'm confident that NATO allies will continue to do so, uh, not least because it is in our security interest that Ukraine prevails. 
their fight is our fight, their security is our security, their values are our values. So it's in our national security interests to ensure that we uh, uh, continue to support Ukraine and that Ukraine prevails. And that has been a message uh, from all NATO allies since the start of the war, and we have demonstrated our support uh, through unprecedented uh, support to Ukraine. Then, of course, NATO and NATO allies, uh, we have the capability, the, the strength to address different challenges at the same time. Uh, we, we don't have the luxury of choosing only one threat and one challenge. So uh, NATO allies also have uh, the capability to address the, uh, uh, the situation in the Middle East. And as you know, uh, several NATO allies have uh, uh, provided support, intelligence, other types of support to, uh, to, uh, to Israel. We'll go to Sky in third row in the middle, please. It's coming behind you. Thank you. Uh, Adam Parsons from Sky News. Uh, Secretary General, uh, can I ask you how worried are you that the conflict in the Middle East can now spill over and create an even bigger war? What can you and the NATO members do to prepare for that here? And if I may ask specifically, do you think that Israel trusted partner of NATO has the right to launch a ground offensive into Gaza? Israel has the right to defend itself um, and uh, uh, they have suffered uh, horrendous uh, terrorist attack over the weekend uh, with uh, many civilians uh, killed and uh, 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 Israel has the right to defend itself against uh, these types of terrorist attacks. Um, then I, uh, I, uh, I uh, also expect that, of course, uh, when uh, we see uh, Israeli responses, it will be proportionate, and it is uh, important as this uh, conflict continues to uh, uh, do whatever is possible to uh, prevent the loss of uh, uh, innocent civilian uh, lives. Um, um, I think it's also an important message that uh, any uh, nation or uh, organization hostile to uh, Israel should not uh, try to utilize um, the situation we now uh, see. Uh, and um, uh, we also see that, for instance, the United States has increased its military presence in the region to also send a clear message of deterrence to prevent escalation of this conflict. Go to uh, Fats on the third row here, please. Thanks a lot, uh, Thomas Kuczka with Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Secretary General, um, uh, on the pipeline incident, I'm just wondering, could there be a role for NATO to investigate this or to support the investigation? Have you offered something to Finland and Estonia or have they maybe asked for assistance from NATO? I'm asking this in view of the fact that NATO has now its own capability on uh, critical infrastructure. Thank you. Well, NATO has been concerned about uh, our critical undersea infrastructure for a long time, for many years. And of course, NATO has capabilities. We have intelligence uh, that is relevant to address and to minimize the risk uh, and to protect our uh, critical infrastructure. After the uh, uh, attacks, uh, the explosions uh, uh, on the uh, North Stream pipelines, uh, we stepped up further. We have established a cell here at the NATO headquarters uh, to coordinate efforts, and we are in the process of also establishing a center at uh, our maritime command in Northwood uh, uh, to, uh, to step up uh, what we do uh, on uh, protecting critical undersea infrastructure. I, I spoke with um, uh, the Finnish uh, president yesterday, Saulin Inistu, and also with, uh, uh, with the um, uh, Prime Minister of, uh, of, of Estonia, Kaja Kalas, yesterday. Um, they updated me uh, on the ongoing national investigations uh, by Finland and Estonia. Um, they share, of course, what they uh, uh, find uh, with, um, with, uh, with NATO. Uh, I told them that we are ready to help them with the national in uh, investigations. Uh, and I also uh, updated on, uh, them on what NATO is doing in general to protect against uh, protect our critical infrastructure. We have to understand that these uh, 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 undersea critical infrastructure is vulnerable because we speak about thousands of kilometers of pipelines, of cables, of uh, internet uh, grid, of power grid, which uh, by nature is uh, vulnerable. Therefore, it is important that we share um, uh, uh, 
uh, information, that we share intelligence, and that we also share best practices in uh, how to protect uh, uh, both between NATO allies, but also between uh, uh, the government uh, and, uh, and the private companies that are operating most of this uh, critical infrastructure. Thanks. We'll go to Politico, row four, please. <laughs> Josh Pisana from Politico. Uh, just a question in view of the recent results in the Slovak election and also the rhetoric that we've been hearing from Poland recently. Has the alliance been forming contingency planning in terms of delivery routes for armaments to Ukraine moving forward? Should there be any restrictions or problems? First of all, Poland uh, has been a strong supporter of Ukraine since the very beginning and, uh, uh, and has expressed again and again that they continue to be ready to uh, uh, support Ukraine and also be uh, a platform, a hub for uh, other allies to deliver uh, Ukraine, uh, to deliver uh, military support into, uh, uh, into uh, Ukraine. Um, uh, also, Aka just had a, 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 an election there will be a new, a new government, but I'm absolutely confident that NATO allies will continue to provide support to Ukraine uh, because it is in our security interest and uh, allies have demonstrated that uh, uh, in deeds uh, through the meeting today. So, uh, of course, it is for the, the, the new government in, in, in Bratislava to speak on behalf of, uh, of Slovakia. It's not for me, but I'm confident that uh, NATO allies will continue to provide support to Ukraine. We have a uh, Swedish radio in second row, please. Just over here. <laughs> but, uh, Secretary uh, what kind of contacts more concrete does NATO have with uh, Finland and Estonia regarding this uh, pipeline issue? More concrete and uh, anything new regarding the Swedish membership? Well, the contact is that we have um, contact on the highest political level. I spoke with the president and the prime minister uh, yesterday. We have our military uh, authorities working closely together, sharing information. Of course, uh, Estonia and Finland are NATO allies. They are present here at the NATO headquarters with military experts who share information. And we have, of course, different platforms of also sharing classified information. That's exactly what we are, uh, are doing. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's too early to determine exactly what caused uh, the, uh, the damage uh, of these, uh, uh, the pipeline and the, and the, and the cable. Um, uh, uh, there are ongoing investigations, and until they are finalized, I think it's a bit too early to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to tell. Uh, but um, uh, if it is proven uh, that this is a deliberate attack uh, on allies' critical uh, undersea infrastructure, uh, this would uh, be a very serious incident, and it will be met by a united and determined uh, response from uh, NATO. But it remains to determine uh, what caused uh, the, uh, the damage, and therefore I think it's a bit too early to, uh, to say exactly how uh, NATO will respond. It depends on uh, what the investigation will, uh, will reveal. But we share information uh, constantly at different levels, the technical level, the political level, uh, with two NATO allies, Estonia and, um, and, um, and Finland. Um, well, uh, on, on, on Swedish uh, membership, I, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm in regular contact with the Turkish authorities. I, I met with President Erdogan recently in, uh, in New York. I spoke with the Turkish uh, foreign minister a few days ago. Uh, and uh, my message is, of course, that we have an agreement in Vilnius uh, where uh, um, uh, Turkey... Uh, uh, said clearly that they um, uh, are ready to uh, ratify uh, that uh, uh, the papers for ratification will be um, transmitted to uh, the Grand National uh, Assembly and that uh, the President will uh, work with the Grand National Assembly, the Parliament, to, uh, to ensure uh, ratification. And it was stated clearly that that should happen as soon as possible, meaning that uh, when the uh, Assembly, the Parliament again, convened, uh, then uh, this process should start to take place. Now the parliament has just uh, convened a few days ago, and therefore I expect this to, uh, to happen. Time for just one or two more. We'll go to Espresso TV Ukraine, row two. Ukraine, Secretary General, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, last week, uh, Admiral Rob Bauer said that uh, NATO's uh, stockpiles are running low and without replenishing them, it might be quite difficult to send more weapons uh, to Ukraine. And uh, how critical can this be? And my second question is, uh, uh, Russia has started to actively blackmail in the civilized world with nuclear weapons again, and Putin has even hinted that he might withdraw Russia from the uh, 
nuclear test ban treaty. Is it just blackmailing again, or maybe he can use actually uh, nuclear uh, weapons uh, if uh, the war in Russian aggressive war in Ukraine uh, fails? Is there any information from the intelligent agencies about this? So first on ammunition. Um, this is an issue we have uh, put very high on the uh, uh, NATO agenda uh, for many months because uh, uh, when, it, when last summer we saw that this was more and more now turning into a war of attrition, uh, we realized that, uh, of course, we uh, were not able in the long run to only uh, um, dig into our own stocks to provide support to Ukraine, uh, because then our own stocks were going to run too low. Uh, so, in the beginning, we could uh, move ammunition from stocks to Ukraine uh, uh, since uh, last summer, since uh, uh, last uh, fall. It has been obvious that uh, we need also to engage with the industry to ramp up production. And since then, we have worked here at NATO uh, uh, with our uh, existing structures, the, 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 the different platforms we have to engage with the industry, but also based on NATO's capability targets, they have been revised upwards to ensure that allies are now producing more. Uh, sometimes it takes time to ramp up production, but allies are now ramping up production. Uh, more and more contracts are signed. Um, we have something we call framework contracts for 2.4 billion euros for ammunition, uh, out of which 1 billion is our firm contracts. Uh, and, and it was an issue also today. Uh, they need to ramp up uh, production and and allies are increasing production, both to replenish our own stocks, but also to be able to continue to provide uh, Ukraine uh, uh, with uh, support. So this is uh, extremely important. I welcome that allies are doing more, and I urge them to sign more and more contracts, but because th th there's this signing of contracts that can uh, enable the industry to produce more and also to make investments in increased production capacity. Uh, yeah, so rest assured, and it was also an issue I discussed with President Zelensky when I visited Kiev, also to have joint uh, efforts by NATO allies and uh, Ukraine uh, to produce more uh, also inside Ukraine to ramp up production also uh, uh, yeah, in, in Ukraine. Then uh, Russia's nuclear rhetoric throughout this conflict has been and continues to be reckless uh, and, uh, and dangerous. Uh, and, um, and uh, Russia must know that uh, a nuclear war uh, cannot be won and must never be fought. Um, uh, of course, we continue to watch uh, 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 what Russia is doing very uh, closely. Um, so far, we haven't seen any changes in their nuclear posture that require any changes in our nuclear uh, posture. Uh, but of course, Russia's announcement uh, on revoking ratification of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty demonstrates uh, Russia's lack of respect uh, and, uh, and the continued disregard for its international uh, commitments and uh, the reckless uh, and this reckless uh, endangers uh, the global norms against uh, a nuclear uh, 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 explosive uh, testing. NATO allies have upheld this norm against nuclear testing for over 25 uh, years and we have no plans to uh, start testing again. Uh, Putin is trying to uh, use nuclear blackmail to intimidate and coerce. He tries to use this nuclear rhetoric to prevent NATO allies uh, from supporting Ukraine, but he will not succeed, because again, it is in our security interest that Ukraine prevails. Uh, so we will continue to uh, support Ukraine and will not allow uh, President Putin to blackmail NATO allies uh, through his nuclear rhetoric. Last question to Romanian radio here in row two. Bogdanin Sopescu, Radio Romania. This is the first meeting after the drone incidents in, uh, in Romania. The Romanians in the area are afraid for their lives. I'm not asking just for a message for them, but only... Uh, but, uh, some details, extra details, about measures, uh, NATO measure, measures in the area against, uh, I don't know, drones or some? Well, NATO has, since the beginning of this war, increased its presence uh, in the Black Sea region, including in Romania. Uh, I remember actually before the full-scale invasion, I, I went to Romania, and we have started already then to increase our presence with NATO troops. Uh, with different uh, capabilities, and of course, since the full-scale invasion, we further stepped up 
uh, our presence um, with planes, uh, with uh, surveillance drones, uh, but also uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, 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 ground forces. Uh, and, um, and after the uh, incident with the drone or the debris uh, from the drone um, near Danube, uh, we further increased our air policing uh, with more planes in the NATO air policing uh, mission in Romania. Uh, to help to detect, to help to monitor. Uh, so far, we have no uh, proof that the, uh, uh, the drones that landed or the uh, debris or the parts of the drone, uh, drones that have landed in Romania are a result of an, an intentional attack on Romania. Uh, uh, the indications and the information we have indicates that these are results of attacks that were uh, uh, targeted on Ukrainian targets, but then ended up uh, in, uh, in, in Romania because the, they're targeting, uh, as you know, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, grain infrastructure <coughs> in the Danube uh, region, very close to the border of, uh, uh, of um, uh, Romania. But we rest assured we, are, we have capabilities, different types of capabilities to closely monitor uh, and also to help uh, 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 protect uh, all NATO allies, including Romania. Um, and, uh, and we are constantly assessing uh, uh, the need to, to, to strengthen our presence, as we have already done uh, in the Black Sea region, including in Romania, also after the drone incident. That's all we have time for. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.